at what's happening at the surface. If you look higher up in the atmosphere, you go up to 500 millibars, you see that we have ridging going on and there's pieces of energies going around that. And if you go even higher up into the jet stream, you can really see that ridge with some stronger winds going through the northern tier. And that's why we could see uh, some of those more severe thunderstorms into North Dakota. At the surface, little piece of energy here, plenty of moisture to squeeze out of the atmosphere, and it's coming down. And notice how, like, Hayes, Dodge City, we have nothing, but everything's going from Colorado. We're getting some of that monsoon moisture, too, by the way, and it's all riding like this up and over that ridge. So into Nebraska we have it and very heavy rainfall into Missouri as well. Few showers just to the west of Denver. North Platte, I-80 is seeing the storms. We do have flood alerts, flood watches. That means conditions are favorable for the development of flooding for us and one flash flood warning there into Nebraska. But this is where we've had the real problems. We have a flood watch and within that you see the smaller, I think this is great to show just so you can understand the difference between a flood watch and a warning. A flood watch means that the area could see some flooding. A flood warning, which are these smaller boxes, you can see these right here, that means that it's imminent or it's occurring, and it is occurring in some places. We already have reports of highways that are flooded. I-70 is getting it, and this is all going right over those same areas. So Concordia, over to S Sweet Springs, we are under those uh, flash flood warnings as we go down here to Coal Camp Lincoln. Uh, we are under flash flood warnings as well, and even farther south of that, headed towards Lebanon, is Lake Ozark, Osage Beach. You know, a lot of these areas people might be visiting for the first time and aren't necessarily aware of their surroundings. So be very careful, especially around the creeks and the streams. Over the past six hours, we're talking three, nearly four inches of rain. It is too much in a short amount of time, and that's what's causing the flooding. So what's going to happen through the day today? Notice we keep getting into Missouri. This could be a real problem. And this is what happens when you have a pattern that sets up and doesn't really move all that much and everything just going right over the same areas. That could be problematic for us as we head through the day. There's more of that monsoon uh, moisture getting into the four corners and then more rain diving again back down into Missouri. So because we have a lot of moisture and everything is stuck in place, it's just going to be rain, rain, and rain all the way through our Wednesday here into the Show Me State. And again, that's where we're probably going to have our biggest concerns when it does come to flooding. In and around the Denver metro area, Jim, we're going to be in and out of it. And that's how these storms are going to be. You're going to get it, especially in the afternoon with some of that heating. And then we die down. And then look again as we head into Wednesday, more storms in the afternoon. And we had a tornado. It's been hot and humid. We've had the combo here for us for it feels like months. It's just been so, so warm for us. And today we are going to see more of the same. Look at all the moisture that's streaming over the state right now. A little boundary to our north. That helps give you a little lift in the atmosphere. And there is a potential for some storms to fire up anywhere from the Carolinas all the way down to the first coast, which is Jacksonville, Florida for you. Here's a look at the energy that is available to pop off those showers and storms. And we've got it already early this morning factor in that daytime heating and you'll get more as we head into uh, the afternoon and there's all your storms kind of firing up and some of these could you know crank out the lightning crank out the rain up uh, and that is going to continue remember the sun doesn't set I, I feel like it still is like uh, around between eight and nine really is when that sun is setting for us here into the south and then things will quiet down into the evening hours it's been wet especially into southeastern Florida. That's where we've had the heaviest rain, and we are above average by nearly three feet in places like Fort Lauderdale, while we're still very dry here on the west coast of Tampa, and we do have drought conditions. So as we were talking about yesterday, Sarasota is having the driest year on record, while Fort Lauderdale is having the wettest year on record. Here's that drought conditions for you from Tampa all the way down towards uh, Everglades and Naples. We're also very, very dry, but more rain is in our forecast as we head through the week here because this moisture stream, Jim, I mean, it's Florida. We're not going anywhere, right? So we'll just see more and more storms fire up for us. Yeah, the only thing- Back in America's morning headquarters and welcome to August. The summer monsoon finally cranks up in the West and Colorado pays a price. Heavy rain and lightning delay the Rockies and Padres at Denver's Coors Field for more than two hours last night. They did go on to win four to three. Storms also delivered large hail and flooding downpours. The National Weather Service says two inches in 30 minutes is not out of the question. Two inches in 30 minutes? 
That's going to cause flash flooding. And Jim, we're already seeing flooding this, this morning in Missouri, and that's going to stick around today and into tomorrow as well. I even think after that. Welcome back into pattern. So far, more than 117 people have died in the U.S. from heat-related illness, and that number is likely to climb. So we know heat kills more people than any other weather event, but why is that? And is there anything we can actually do to change that? Dr. Jonathan Kim is the head of sports cardiology at Emory University in Drought, California. He's breathing a sigh of relief, aren't they? This year's heavy snow and rain have really helped ease dry conditions across the West Coast. And you don't have to live there to reap the benefits. Wine lovers, you could enjoy a better bottle thanks to all of that rain. Reporter Ashley Nanfria from our partners at KOVR explains the time it's so cool i watched a documentary on it and it's all about the nutrients in the soil yeah. and then of course the weather and you can have two bottles from the same place that taste completely you know different. completely different from different years yeah and we were just talking about with colleen too about sommeliers and master sommeliers <laughs> and how they can take a how sip and be like oh this is probably this is from whatever region right uh, from this year from this year then they're like they take a sip oh this was from a hot summer a cold yeah. summer yeah I, it's, that's it's right it blows my mind there's very few master sommeliers because I think it is so hard. So, uh, yeah. so I just know it's either good wine or bad wine. Right. That's, 